and welcome back to Summit Railway. My name is Robert, I am building a garden railroad and today we are talking about switches. So let's get right into it. If you are new to railroading in general, this is a switch. Or some of you may call it a point, but for this video it's pointless. So, <laughs> Oh man, that came out of nowhere. Anyways, this is a switch and it basically allows you to send your train from one track to another. When you are now like, wow, I need my own switch, then you have to consider a few things. First of all, you need to determine if you need a switch going to the left, which this one is, or going to the right. So you can determine that by looking at the straight piece of track and if the curved piece is going to the left, it's a switch to the left, obviously. Second, you want to know how steep of a branch angle you want. By branch angle I mean this angle right here. This switch has a 22.5 degrees uh, branch angle and this switch up here has a 15 degree branch angle. And you can see the difference of the two switches right here. Third, you want to know how big of a curve radius you want on your switch. You can see those two switches, they both have a branch angle of 22.5 degrees, but they differ in the curve radius. So you can see this switch has a much smaller curve radius than this switch, and that's why they are so different in, in length. So those are the three main criteria when buying switches for the Garden Railroad. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you should go for a small branch angle and a big curve radius to ensure a safe operation and a nice look when your train goes past the switch. Last but not least, we need to talk about brands. So despite the fact that there are so many brands on the market right now, I will talk about the three main manufacturers I have experience with and that would be on the very bottom LGB, in the middle a Pico and on the top is a teal switch. When it comes to LGB I think we are talking about the most classic manufacturer on the market. I have had their Radius 3 switches like this one and their Radius 5 switches, the uh, bigger ones. And my experience overall was good um, when they came right out of the box, but after a few years um, I've got some trouble. For example, those moving parts are getting loose over time and to fix that you need to um, deattach the, the switch from the rails, um, pull it out completely and tighten those screws up again. Um, some other uh, things I noticed, those straps uh, which transfer the power between the rails um, are kind of flimsy compared to other manufacturers and those are the weak points of the LGB switches. Here we have a Radio 7 switch manufactured by Pico. I have a friend uh, who operates those switches on his layout for several years now and he hasn't had a problem yet. And what I like about those switches is that the moving parts uh, snap into final position even without a switch motor attached. Uh, so that's a big plus and uh, overall it looks very sturdy. It's not as detailed as uh, let's say the LGB switch. Um, but it not only looks sturdy, it is sturdy. So that's what I like about the Pico switches. The third candidate of the day is a teal switch. It claims to be a premium product, uh, which is handmade in Germany. And right off the bat I can see a brass crossing. And the overall feel of the switch is pretty sturdy, um, although it looks very detailed. So the first impression is very good. I also know that Teal has a very good reputation, at least in Germany, for those kinds of products. And um, other than that I don't have any experience because this switch got shipped to me today. 
So um, we will see what the future holds. I will keep you updated about those switches. All right, you guys, that's my take on Garden Railroad switches. I hope you've learned something today and we will see us in the next one. Bye.